350 years ago, Isaac Newton formulated his theory of gravity. Newton's theory unified the heavens and the earth under the same physical laws, and neatly explained the orbits of the planets, the motion of comets, and how the moon causes the tides. Although Einstein's general relativity has supplanted Newton's theory as a better model of gravity, Newtonian mechanics got us to the moon and are still used to calculate the trajectories of spacecraft throughout the solar system. In spite of this success and more than three centuries of progress, we still do not have a neat set of equations that allow us to calculate the orbital parameters of more than two objects at once. This is called the three-body problem, or more generally the n-body problem. When calculating the orbits of two bodies that are gravitationally attracted to one another, all you have to do is put in the time that you want, and Newton's equations will spit out the precise position, speed and direction of the two objects at that time. But no one has yet discovered the equations needed to do this for three or more objects at the same time. This is a problem because there are certainly more than two things in the solar system. We can get around this by formulating equations that give an approximate solution to the motion of three or more objects, and since the mid-20th century we've been able to use computers to simulate the orbits using brute force step-by-step -step calculations. However, there are some special cases of three-body orbits that we have been able to formulate neat equations for. The first and most obvious is the situation where you have three objects of equal mass orbiting each other in a triangular formation. But this isn't particularly useful, because this orbit is unstable. Any slight perturbation to one of the objects will result in chaos, with the body either crashing into its orbital partners or being ejected from the group entirely. But there are other solutions that are stable, but a lot weirder. In 1993, mathematician Chris Moore found that three bodies with equal mass can chase each other around a figure-eight shaped orbit. In 2001, Carl Simo showed that this orbit is stable. Later, other mathematicians gave a rigorous proof of this orbit using the principle of least action, an important principle in theoretical physics calculations. They also showed that this orbit is stable even if the masses are slightly different which means there's a chance that somewhere there's a group of stars with this orbit. But they'll be rare. It's estimated that there's only about one of these triple systems per galaxy. So while we may never find one of these systems in our galaxy, it's almost certain that there is one somewhere in the visible universe. Carl Simo also discovered many other choreographies in which several bodies with the same mass pursue each other along complicated, twisting paths. While physically possible, each of these orbits is more unlikely to exist than the last. But it gets weirder. In 2015, Eugene Ox calculated that a planet in a binary star system can wander backwards and forwards between the two stars in a corkscrew-shaped orbit. This orbit is stable even if the stars don't move in circles around each other, or for stars of different masses, where the spiral is tapered into a cone. Because the process of star formation creates planar orbits, it's unlikely that a planet will form in a corkscrew orbit. However, under the right circumstances, a planet can be captured by the binary stars and orbit between them in this way. With around 100 billion stars in the galaxy, half of which are in binary systems and most of which have planets, it may only be a matter of time before we find a planet corkscrewing its way between stars.